My name is Tom, and today I'm going to be working with my Automation Direct PLC. In today's video, I am going to be downloading the firmware to try to fix a flashing run LED problem that I'm having. I'm going to show you the problem here real quick. And here's the processor. And here is the flashing LED. Now the run LED is not supposed to flash, it's supposed to be a constant green when it's in run mode, just like the power light. So I'm going to try to take care of that today. So I'm going to come down here to my step-by-step -step guide and I'm going to scroll down here to the materials I'll be using today. And these are the materials I'll be needing in today's project. So besides the 205 base and the 260 processor and the programming cables for either COM port 1 or COM port 2, I will be needing the coil support tool along with the firmware. So if I was to follow this hyperlink right here, it will lead me to this website here, which is the Automation Direct website. And if I come down here to where it says Upgrade Tools, here is the coil support tool that you'll need to download. So I click on that. And you can open, save, or save as. I do recommend that you save this because you may need it at a later date. So I'm going to cancel this. Then I'm going to come up here to the firmware section and come down to where it says download firmware binaries and click on this link here. That will bring me to this web page. And in the Direct Logic PLCs, I am going to scroll down and look for my processor. And I found it right here, which is the D2-260. And the file name that we will be downloading today is the D260V270.zip. The version is a 2.70. So I'm going to click on download now. And that's going to open up this window here. And you can either open it, save it, or save it as. I do recommend that you save it as. And here's where I normally put my firmware upgrades. Is I come here and scroll down and go to the local disk C and click on that and I usually put it in the DirectSoft 5 folder here as you can see I have the zipped version here along with the unzipped version and then I'm going to come back here to my step-by-step -step guide and scroll down here a little bit to my project description so now I'm going to continue scrolling down and show you the step-by-step -step procedures but we will be going over these procedures in this video but I'm just going to give you a little brief example of what's coming up so you can stop this at any time And we are finished here. And what I'd like to do next is I'd like to pull up the coil support tool here. And this is the main page for that. And under interface type, I will be selecting to use the wizard type today. And also if your DirectSoft software is running, you'll need to close it down before updating your firmware. So here I'm going to click next. Make sure that my radio button for the wizard type is selected. And I will come to step one and it asks me which module I am using. So I'm going to click here and drop down the box and come down here to the D2 260 processor. And then I'm going to click next. And in step two, it basically identifies which cable I can use for this operation. It also gives me the wiring diagram for each cable in case if I care to roll my own cable. I'm going to close this and then click next. In step 3, it asks me a question of if my run LED is not blinking or if my run LED is blinking. So right now my run LED is blinking. So I'm going to click run LED is blinking radio button here and then click next. 
And in step five, it asked me for which COM port that I have my programming cable plugged into. I am presently in COM port one, so I am going to click next. And here is where we select the firmware that we would want to download to the processor. Here I'm going to click browse. As you can see, I already have a firmware selected, but I'm going to click browse anyways just to show you. This software is kind of limited. A lot of times it doesn't show all of the files here. So you have to be aware of the type of file that you put in here and that you save your firmware to. That's why I normally put it in the DirectSoft 5 folder here. And I'm going to click on the DirectSoft 5 and here is my unzipped folder here. So I'm going to click on that and it loaded it to this window here. So I'm going to click open and it saved it here. Now I'm going to click next. So now I'm ready to start updating my DL260 processor. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press the start update button here and what I'm expecting to see here is a countdown for the remaining minutes and seconds of the download and also I should see my run LED start to flash faster on my processor. So I'm going to click start update and it takes a few seconds to establish a link and there is my remaining time. It's going to be roughly about 9 or 10 minutes. So I'll see you back when the download is complete. Okay, I'm back and my updating is done. Now it's prompted me to power down my PLC for 5 seconds and then power it back up and check to make sure that my LED is not flashing. So I Powering it down. Three, four, five. Now I'm powering it back up. Okay, since my run light has stopped flashing, I'm going to want to check this out, make sure that it runs. So I'm going to exit this and I'm going to pull up DirectSoft 5 program and I'm going to attempt to communicate with it and download a small program to it. I'm going to come here and I'm going to connect to the PLC. And it looks like I have connection. It's reading the program in the PLC. Now I'm expecting it to come up with a difference in the programs in the PLC versus the desktop because the program in the PLC should be pretty much non-existent. There should be no PLC program in there after I downloaded the firmware on this. So this will take a few seconds here. Okay, so there is a difference between what is in the PLC and what I have pulled up on my desktop. So I'm going to use the disk here. Well, actually, first I'm going to check the details. And as I suspected, there's no program in here. So I'm going to close this out and use the disk. Now I'm going to attempt to download the program to the processor. It's a small program, so it shouldn't take long. Now I'm going to come up here to the mode and place the processor into run and make sure it goes into run mode. So it looks like I have success here. My processor went into run mode. It is running the program now and my LED for my run light is no longer flashing. But if this would not have taken off as well as it did the first time, I would have attempted to download the firmware two or three more times and then if it didn't take off from there, I would just scrap the processor. So I hope that this video helps you, and if you like it, let me know. So until then, have a good day.